Good morning fellow monkeys, today is a special day. We're gonna hit the Zigoina Loch with a very strong climber from the Graz area, uh, Jakob. I'm gonna ask him if he wants to do an interview again. That's gonna be, could be an interesting one. And yeah, maybe we can also create some cool vlog footage today. We're gonna check out, I think, a pretty hard route. <laughs> I'm not gonna spoil too much now. But I think he's got some beta already and I uh, got my hands on it one time already. I found it super hard to be honest. Uh, but yeah, let's see how it goes. Let's pick him up first. He's in all his soft to check. Nice, schnelle carbs. Good morning, Jakob. Hello. <laughs> Schau, wie ich überhaupt sehen kann. <lacht> nice. Okay, los geht's. Oh. <lacht> Schaut ein bisschen nass so aus heute. War nass denn da zum letzten Mal? Zwei Wochen, drei Wochen. Okay. Das war ja da, wo ich das zum ersten Mal rausgekehrt habe können. Mhm. Und dann war ich irgendwie nicht mehr da. Jakob is already warming up in the background. Well, we adjust the camera. He also has a beautiful finger shin there, as you can see. Interesting shoulder activation there. The route at hand is this one here. It's called Gaiavardi, and I already checked it out once. I made a little uh, video on the Patreon of that. If you, in case you remember, after I sent the first pitch of it, which is called Gervik's Week, which uh, which goes to the to the dihedral there in the roof up here, actually. You can see here the side jug, from there you clip the anchor of Herwigsweg and Gaia Valley is pretty much the prolongation of Herwigsweg throughout these quick draws there. With a pretty nasty boulder I think over this belly. And today it's a little bit wet, so I don't know how much, uh, if we have good cards for proper goals today, but uh, I'm already curious to see Jakob's beta because I was, I was pretty stunned by the difficulty to be honest. And uh, he already made all the moves. Uh, so I'm curious to see how how he solved this uh, and if I can do it as well. Aufgewärmt? Ja, schon mehr oder weniger. Was ist so deine Aufwärmstrategie? Das ist äh, um, erläutern. Ein bisschen am Fingerschinder, die Finger aufwärmen, mhm. Schultern aktivieren. Du machst immer so interessante Schulter. Pull-ups nur. Ja, genau, einfach um den Schultergürtel ein bisschen okay. aufzuwärmen. Interessant. Ein bisschen mobilisieren vielleicht. Mhm. Und dann eh schon mal locker reinkommen. Cool. Passt. <lacht> Und gleich direkt rein in die Geierwalli. Schauen wir ja, mal. Ich denke schon. Okay. Mal schauen, wie. Die, erste, die ersten paar Züge sind eh okay, ne? Genau, ja. Die erste Länge, weil wir eh bis zum Nacht ist eh okay. Und dann mhm. mal schauen, wie nass das wirklich ist. Mhm. Okay. All right, let's take a closer look at the route. I think it's actually pretty interesting from a strategy and solution finding point of view, I would say. I could get decent shots of both of us, Jakob and I, and we got kind of different solution on some of these problems. So it's, it's quite interesting to compare that, I think. Uh, the, the route was unfortunately so wet that we couldn't do really any red point attempts or something like that. Although I gotta say I was not ready for any red point attempts anyway so far because yeah, I was doing some of these moves for the first time. Jakob definitely looked a lot more solid on some of these sequences already. He could link a lot of stuff, which we will see in a second. Um, here he is on his way to the roof in the first vertical section of the route and um, this is around, if it's dry, I would say it's around 6C or something. It's not that big of a deal, but of course if it's wet like this, um, you, you could probably power through, but then you have wet fingers for the hard stuff and the 
after the 6C, uh, the, the, the connection into the roof is actually a pretty decent boulder. I would say it's around, I don't know, maybe 7A boulder problem or something. And doing this with wet fingers and also some holes of this boulder problem are wet as well is kind of impossible. So what we see now is uh, Jakob sitting down into, the, into one of the first draws. And then he's basically unrolling himself from draw to draw here until he uh, arrives in the roof. And uh, here we should be able to see now, uh, This in this shot, this I wanted to show you especially because here he found a pretty decent knee bar, yeah, which is something that I didn't do in the Heavix week. This is still part of the Heavix week. So here it's actually starting to get really serious with difficulty. Uh, I didn't find this knee bar. As you know, I'm not the, the greatest knee barer on, on, on earth, but uh, Jakob found it and it's pretty, good situated it's pretty well situated because it's after the first boulder and this will allow you if you want to do the whole thing to shake out for one last final time he said it's actually good enough to almost let your hands go completely yeah so this could be potentially a no hand knee bar really necessary before the roof section starts so as you can see here uh, Jakob again grabbing quick draws after quick draws to pulling himself into the start of the actual pro prolongation so uh, where he's pulling himself to now this is actually the side pull from which you can clip the anchor of Herwig's Weg but uh, when you want to climb the whole thing you obviously don't do that you just simply grab the rope and clip the next quick draw which is already clipped now in his case so now we've got a cr quite nice crossover here into this undercling with right intermediate with left and then some stepping and a big span into this undercling in the roof so now we're uh, stepping into completely roof terrain he makes a beautiful bicycle there there on one kind of uh, significant foothold matches with right here and then turns his left hand around into undercling as well and this undercling although in a complete roof is quite decent you can clip the next quick draw from that as you can see here he's doing that quite solidly now we've got a step with left beautiful drop knee there actually from one undercling into the next and this is kind of pinchy hard to hold if you don't get it right and here another bicycle actually stepping with left and toe hooking with right now stepping undercling move boom into the first smaller edge of the crux so now we're attacking the boulder problem really here really high stepping again a bicycle left stepping this time and right toe hook and now boom the next move into the next edge where he fell so this is pretty interesting he has a different solution here uh, than i do i go with the left hand into the next edge as we will see but yeah uh the the crux is going to be sticking this after this uh this crazy ascent that you've already got in your fingers yeah once you're there so what is it it's basically yeah 6c into 7a boulder problem uh, then a knee bar where you probably can shake quite well and then you get this uh, start of the crux of Herwig's Weg which is uh, yeah uh, up until the anchor it's already 8b yeah where you get the big side pull from which you started from which Jakob now started into the prolongation and uh, this whole sequence there pff, this is probably another 8b on its own yeah? and then you still have uh, I would say 7b or something you get a quite good rest after this boulder problem and then you've got 7b to the top still yeah so it's it's quite it adds up it's it adds up a lot let's see how i do here um again as soon as i arrive at the wet spots i'm sitting down into the harness and uh unrolling myself from quick draw to quick draw until I arrive again in this dihedral at the end of Herwig's Weg at the start of the prolongation. Here we have the big side pull again with right. Uh, probably you will match it here and shake out quite a bit still yeah, before you start in the complete roof because it's so necessary here. Crossing over into the strange undercling, resetting my right foot. I need to have it a little bit closer. Big span into the uh, Gaston with left, yeah, which is already in the complete roof. Here I'm differently than Jakob, stepping into the roof with left a lot and not bicycling. Somehow the bicycle didn't work out for me. Then falling into the undercling as well with the right hand, matching it here, solidly clipping from there because the undercling is quite decent. Next undercling with left. Now I'm, uh, I think I'm forgetting my, my footwork, yeah, so um, actually I got the undercling quite well, but I forget my footwork, so that's why I'm sitting down here again. Uh, let's take a look at the next attempt here. 
pulling myself into the wall again. Undercling with left from this beautiful drop knee with the left foot here. Yeah? So stepping with right, it's kind of it's kind of weird. Not really stepping with right because you're actually toe hooking with right, but it's counterintuitive because in a bicycle you would always assume that your closer foot is stepping and the further foot away is pulling with a toe hook or something like that. Because but here it's just the other way around. Yeah, the closer foot is actually toe hooking and the further away foot is stepping. So let's try it again here. Again, undercling left, pulling with right toe hook, matching the undercling. Now you step totally frontally, and this is actually one of the hardest moves. The undercling into this left edge up there. Uh, and then I'm again forgetting my footwork. Yeah, I mean, as you can see, I'm a lot less, um, you know, trained in these sequences still than Jakob is. Jakob can link here pretty well. I am struggling here a lot actually, but uh, yeah, I'm happy that this undercling move even works because it's actually a super hard move. Now I'm trying to pre-clip the next quick draw so that I can try the upcoming crux properly without falling down so much all the time because yeah, I don't want to pull myself up on the rope all the time. And uh, so as you can see, I'm pulling myself down here again. Let's try it again. Prop knee with left foot, undercling into undercling, left hand, pinch it properly resetting the feet <coughs> okay here I didn't get it right the undercling it's really tricky man you have to you have to sort this undercling in the right way it's kind of a pinch and it, there is a thumb which you have to hit just perfectly yeah and if you don't then you basically the attempt is, is lost so let's try again here undercling drop knee with left foot into the next undercling with the left hand and uh, now I think I hit it properly, right foot toe hook, left foot stepping, bicycle matching the, the undercling, really high stepping with left, very frontal stepping as well there. From the bottom this is definitely going to be one of the hardest moves, you're gonna fall there a lot I think. The undercling move into this next uh, edge, because you're standing so frontally and it's just a pure power move and there is no way around it, boom. So here we stick it right foot stepping left foot stepping really high and then right foot again bicycling yeah matching and uh, now it's getting really hard these are two really small edges this next edge is very very small and uh, you i solved it that way i step out of the roof then and try to make a drop knee with the right foot and uh, just to show you again how that works if it's <laughs> if it's working as a single move at least um, and this is also something that is different from Jakob's method, yeah. So let's see here. Boom, hitting the left edge, right foot, drop knee and bend. And we got this crazy dino onto a pretty good edge uh, above the belly. And from there it's a couple more not so easy moves. But it's I think once you stick this single dino move, it is actually over yeah and I am going there with my right hand so Jakob actually goes there with his left hand he crosses over from the small edge that you have before that yeah which is interesting I tried to uh, compile a little comparison here of us two again from this uh, very hard sequence through the roof which actually makes this uh, 8c plus I would say I would say it's 8c plus the first ascent is it gave it 8c but um, I think it's actually 8c plus and I think Jakob agrees here big move into the roof into the gas dome and again I'm not doing the bicycle here as you can see I'm stepping just very very left and uh, falling into the into the undercling with my right hand there as well now we both try to get the clip in uh, I already got it um, Jakob took a little longer because he's got a more sophisticated uh, shaking sequence here on these good underclings which is something that I probably have to do as well once I make attempts from the bottom next undercling with left stepping stepping here this really tricky match there I'm looking for my feet again like a noob uh, yeah but I think in the next shot I should stick it left hand undercling yeah, right foot toe hook matching the undercling. Stepping, stepping, really high, really frontal, boom, very hard move from this undercling into the next edge. Yeah. Uh, here I'm looking for my feet again like a noob. Jakob has to wait here for a second for me, sorry. Boom, again trying stepping right stepping left and here I'm actually stepping a little higher than Jakob which is also very very crucial because that makes my solution possible matching the hold here he goes with right 
and I go with left as you can see. Yeah, both of us still have the toe hook in the right foot and then I'm releasing the toe hook and make this, this drop knee there, which is possible because my left foot is stepping a slightly different foothold than he does, than Jakob does. Yeah, and this allows me to get this uh, drop knee in and stick this dyno that way. And uh, Jakob in this uh, attempt unfortunately fell there, but I also saw that he stuck it already in this session as well uh, with his solution. Yeah, so his solution is definitely valid as well. Very interesting to um, to compare us to here. Thank you, Jakob, for the great session. I found it interesting that we have different videos. Thank you for the whole tips. That was extremely helpful. Yeah, bitte, bitte. I don't know if you know this, but I have a Patreon video made where I already had the route checked out after I made the first length of the Herwigs Way. Und da ist sie mir viel schwerer vorgekommen als heute, weil ich halt irgendwie keinen Zugang dazu hatte. Aber da sieht man wieder mal, wie wichtig es ist, dass man mit jemandem geht, der sich auskennt oder der halt zumindest auch motiviert ist, etwas zu projektieren. Oft einmal ist es eine riesige Hürde, allein in was reinzustarten und selber alle Peter zu finden und so weiter. Ja. Wie hast du dich gefühlt in der Route heute? Ja, ich war halt ein bisschen müde, okay. aber insgesamt, ja, mir hat es auch sehr taugt, mal mit jemandem die Route zu probieren. <lacht> ja, cool. Ich glaube, wie du sagst, das bringt halt voll viel, wenn man gegenseitig sich ein bisschen beobachten kann, überhaupt einmal jemand anderen in der Route sieht. Und ja, insgesamt hat schon gepasst. Also bin zufrieden und motiviert auf weitere Sessions. Sehr gut, ja, ich auch. Passt. Dann, bis dann. Wir sehen uns. Voll. <lacht> Raw Climbing. Oder? Ja, Raw Climbing. Raw Climbing, ja. Raw Climbing auf YouTube. Jakobs Channel, wo er einfach von seinen Essenz sehen kann. Good stuff! <laughs> What a great session. Jakob is a pretty chill and awesome dude. Super strong climber as well. He could tell me a lot about his route and yeah, super great, super glad uh, to have him on this adventure today. And we already agreed upon attacking the route together in the future again. So that's gonna be awesome, I think. No better way to uh, finish this day with one of my all time classics. Uh, when it comes to cuisine, not so much efficient cuisine because this is actually a little bit of work, but uh, definitely delicious cuisine. And that is the all time favorite lasagna, of course. Okay, so we already prepared some stuff. We've got a dough here. This is gonna be for our lasagna sheets. Yeah. This is again, yeah, traditional Italian pasta dough. We've got 300 grams of flour. The lower protein flour here is better, in my opinion. Then we've got three eggs. In this case, we had one big one, one medium one, and one small one. Uh, so yeah, if you can get them, it's three medium eggs. Uh, it's gonna be a pretty dry dough. Don't uh, worry too much about that. It's uh, it's awesome that way. And you uh, you mix everything together. You knead it one time, and you let it rest for 30 minutes and then you need it a second time and then you let it rest for at least one hour. Yeah? So this way you form the first gluten fibers and after some time, after this final resting period, the gluten relaxes and it's gonna be a lot easier to work with, as you will see in a second. Then we already prepared as well our beautiful sauce here. Yeah, okay, this is gonna be, this is just classic bolognese sauce. Uh, we've got in there a little bit of uh, organic bacon, Fry some organic minced meat, go for the fatty stuff, the mixed stuff, okay, pork and beef, not the beef only because that's usually not very fatty. Um, yeah. Then you fry that, you add tomato puree, fry that as well to get the get rid of the acids and keep the sweetness, enhance the sweetness. Why? Then we we actually yeah, we deglazed it today with a little bit of red wine, which is yeah, very amazing. And we added to that some vegetable broth. This is the standard stuff that I'm making always for my uh, kitchen at home. It's basically a couple of vegetables cooked in some water, added some uh, bay leaves, some pepper, and grind it up in my blender and then uh, running it through a, a cheesecloth. Yeah, kind of a super fine sieve and getting the juice out, getting the, the broth out. Yeah, Adding that to the sauce and then adding a little bit of standard tomato sauce. Bay leaf in there, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. There's already spices in there from the tomato sauce, yeah, from the pre-made tomato sauce. So you don't need to go too salty there. But that's essentially, and then leave that for a simmer on the stove for like 15, 20, 30 minutes or something, depending on how long you take for doing the rest stuff, yeah. So this is this sauce essentially. 
and then we already have prepared another sauce of course it's very crucial for proper lasagna which is the bechamel okay so this was pretty much a uh, yeah a grind for me to find out the perfect recipe finally I found a good YouTube video on that it's actually very simple you have to get it right every time 80 grams of butter 80 grams of flour go for the low protein flour again uh, and use a kitchen scale okay this way you will always get it the right way one liter of milk yeah you melt the butter in the pot then you add the flour you kind of mix that together until it's smooth until it's a smooth consistency yeah then you keep heating it a little bit you, you fry out the flour a little bit not too much but not too little and then you get it away from the heat and add a little bit of cold milk still mix that together and it's gonna create this very um, very homogeneous emulsion yeah and to that once that homogenizes you add the rest of the milk and this way you don't get any clumps yeah so you keep stirring that until it's properly dissolved and then you put it back on the heat and then you bring everything to a boil uh, to a boil not, not necessarily but you heat it up before that you add a little bit of salt a little bit of pepper and some grated nutmeg of course very important for a proper bechamel and uh, as it heats up, as it keeps heating up, and as you keep stirring it, okay, you can't go away then from this thing because otherwise it's gonna stick to the floor of the pan. Uh, you have to keep stirring it, and at some point it's gonna get this kind of runny texture that we so love so much from a bechamel, okay? So that's how you get the bechamel. And then you're pretty much ready for layering it, yeah? And when it comes to layering, I've tried all kinds of combinations. Uh, there is only one very best uh, method to do it, and that is to start with bolognese sauce, then you add some bechamel on that, and then you add the layer of ground up of, of grated Parmigiano cheese or a grana cheese, which we use here, and then you put one sheet, yeah? and then you start again. Bolognese sauce, bechamel sauce, uh, grated grana, and one sheet. With this amount of dough and the standard uh, lasagna form, yeah, this usually yields about five sheets. Yeah? And so you can layer it up five times, finish it up with uh, bolognese, uh, bechamel and grana, and then you put it into the preheated oven at 180 degrees Celsius, and then you wait for 20 to 30 minutes and it's gonna be freaking awesome, okay? So let's get everything started here. First of all, I'm gonna make a cut here. Cut here, cut here, and a cut here. So that's gonna be our five sheets of lasagna dough. And we're gonna press that flat. And I've already pulled it into one direction a little bit more than into the others. And then gonna get of course the proper dough wood out. Now you can make things a little bit easier and a little bit safer with a little bit of flour in case you're afraid that this stuff stuff could stick to your to your tools here but usually it shouldn't happen yeah and we're working this thing out When it becomes translucent like that, then you know you're ready. Yeah? So this is also pretty fitting for our lasagna form here. You can see, putting it down there. And these self-made lasagna sheets, I tell you, they really make a difference, okay? Uh, you wouldn't believe it actually. It really makes a difference. Much better than the pre-made stuff that you can buy at the store. So we're gonna go through these sheets and we're gonna show you the final product. And we're a little bit volume-wise low with the, um, the bolognese sauce today. That's why we're gonna finish it up with only bechamel and cheese. But yeah, as Mona says, actually we always did it like that. I think that's actually the best way to finish it up. Just a layer of bechamel and grated cheese on there. Oh yeah. Here we are. I'm gonna eat the rest like. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so if you're in stick, stick figure mode, obviously, for a project or something, this is, of course, a no-no recipe for you. Yeah, stay away from it. Just stay away from it. Actually, this is total... This is total heresy to even show this on a climbing focused uh, channel like this. Ready? Yes. We're gonna update you when it's ready. Alright, let's take it out. Uh, dodge the steam. So now actually comes the hardest part, which is not cutting it and eating it immediately. Because if this cools down a little bit, it's gonna be a lot easier to cut. It's gonna, you know, reconsolidate the shape and form and everything. And uh, yeah, if we cut it now, everything runs apart and then it's and it dries up and it has not this perfect consistency anymore. Yeah, so we're gonna let it cool down a little bit and then we're gonna make some nice feasting. The time has come. Let's cut it. Still a little bit warm here, but let's see. Oh, look Ooh. at that. <laughs> look at that, my friend. Oh, my lord. Let's get the second one out. We have some problems with the focus here. Look here, look here. We need to get this here. Because, um, look into the, in the, into the form, you see that? No fluids coming out now, because we waited a little bit with cutting it, okay? So this way all the taste stays in the lasagna, actually. So this is, yeah, another detail that makes the world perfect, most perfect lasagna, actually, world most perfect. Mm-hmm, okay. Time for a taste test. I cannot move the baby. You it's want to make a taste test? Good? Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, hmm? my friends, yeah, I'm gonna do another. I'm gonna do another test as well here. Baby's looking for mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very creamy. Creamy, a little bit spicy. The sheets just have the right texture. Perfect. Perfect chewiness. My friends, let me know down below if you enjoyed the vlog. Um, keep crushing, stay strong, stay healthy. And I'll see you soon. Marzat. Marzat. Boo, man. I'm telling you, it's gonna be a tough email session tonight. But it has to be done. <laughs>